Peace, brothers and sisters out there. Shalom to you all. Just want to say God bless y'all and thank y'all for continuing to support the channel. So I just wanted to do this video on Drake, Aubrey Graham, the serpent Drake, the dragon Drake. Very important for us to understand what this dude is about because he's a high, high figure. And it's important that we understand these last days. These high figures are going to reveal more unto us what they're truly about. And it's going to be easier for us to discern it. So you see here, this is supposed to be a teaser for his new album coming out in January 2021, known as Certified Lover Boy. Now, we understand that um, entertainment industry, they like to work in the law of reversals. So, like, for example, sometimes when you see 999, that's supposed to be 666. Or when you see, like, for this instance, Certified Lover Boy, it's really supposed to be Certified Boy Lover in regards to the surreptitious understanding of what the entertainment industry is all about and how they're trying to make it more palatable to the masses in regards to pederasty and pedophilia but it's deeper than that am i accusing drake of being a pederast no not exactly <laughs> but he could be and the reason why he could be is because of you know certain findings but we're gonna go through it and i hope you guys bear with me so let's just look at this little teaser real quick i'm gonna play it in continuity and then i'm gonna go through it you know afterwards So as you see, the teaser for Drake's new album coming in January 2020, and you see it here in the yellow for enlightenment for the sun, as well as black for the black sun, for Saturn, the Roman god, basically Osiris. So um, in the beginning, you saw Drake as young Drake, you know, young, wide eyed, you know, innocent Drake looking in to the star or the moon, per se. And you see the roses coming from the moon. Which is supposedly, which is basically supposed to signify Isis, because Isis is the moon goddess, as well as Aphrodite when it comes to the, the roses. Now I'm gonna go more into that aspect, but you also see, you know, the shade of light being shined on him for enlightenment, and him being able to climb up that ladder of enlightenment to the steps of heaven. And then afterwards, you see Drake in his um his thank me later. I mean, not thank me later. His take care altar, where it's basically supposed to mimic take care. The album take care. And it's supposed to be it's supposed to signify that Drake is solidified in regards to okay, you go from so far going to thank me later. Even though Drake didn't um highlight thank me later, but there there's a reason why he didn't highlight thank me later, and the reason why I believe that is because of him being at certain phases with certain albums in regards to his Luciferian status. So take care, he was at a certain phase when it comes to Luciferian status. You know, he was at that dawn that Don life position in regards to him being, you know, the boss. And when you see take care, it's like him at the table sitting like he's a boss with the black on, you know, for Saturn and him being able to um, position himself for, you know, better heights in regards to Luciferianism. That's why afterwards, what you had, um, nothing was the same. The title itself is giving off that he's embedded into the craft. Nothing was the same. That innocent wide eyed Drake is gone. You feel what I'm saying? Now he's more grittier. Now he's more, you know, now he's more um, polished in regards to him being a, you know, a, a superstar, but more grittier in regards to him worshiping the dark arts. So afterwards, you have what? You have the album, even though he didn't highlight it, but I wanted to highlight it. You have the album. If you're reading this, it's too late. And the reason why it's important for us to understand that title, if you're reading this, it's too late. 
just letting you know that he's embedded into the craft. Because when you read something like that, like on a note or whatever, where somebody may say, oh, if you're reading this, it's too late. It's like a suicide note. Drake is basically saying that he's embedded into the craft. He's letting you know that he is, he's prone to death in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. The Most High is going to kill him. He's bound to die. Now, bound to die in the eyes of the Most High is different from death, you know, in regards to the just, just natural death and in, in, in life. So when I say that, certain brothers understand what I mean when I say that. So, yeah, um, that's what Drake understands. You feel what I'm saying? Because the higher levels of, of society, they understand the pagan gods. And for in order for you to understand the pagan gods, you have to understand what? You have to understand the scriptures. You feel what I'm saying? Because they worship the pagan system. Drake is a high level Luciferian. He's a he's a um, Kabbalist. He's a quote unquote Jew. You feel what I'm saying? So he he he's uh, he's into the Talmud and, and the rites and the rituals of the Kabbalah, which is what pederasty, so on and so forth, right? So here you have Drake and his son sporting the all black for Saturn. You feel what I'm saying? And you see Drake's son, you know, with his hand, with his hand like in a little pyramid form, you know, for the mother goddess. You know what I mean? Drake's son here, as above, so below pose. Now he's being coached to take these pictures like this, obviously. So it's all about making ends meet when it comes to the rituals and what they worship. So his name is Adonis, Drake's son's name. And Adonis, in the um, understanding of the mythology, is Woden or Odin. You feel what I'm saying? Also going into Heru Pa Kareh because you have the blonde hair. Or like, you know, it's like darkish blonde hair. You feel what I'm saying? Drake is a worshiper of the sun god and a worshiper of the mother goddess. That's what he is. So you see Drake here sporting his certified level boy um, sweater. And you see 666 there. You see the six um, on the very, very far left, on the bottom and the top. And then right next to it, you see the six in the middle, which is above, you know, the one on the bottom. But you can't necessarily see that as a six on the bottom. But you can see the 666 forming a pyramid on the very far left, that six there. And then on the top, you see the six there. And then right next to it is a six. So it's supposed to represent 666 as, as a pyramid form. And the number six is a representation of, a, of you know, a spiral. You going from the physical world to the spirit world, as well as understanding, understanding that the number six represents Saturn because Saturn is a sixth planet, right? You see the number six here. You see the poster for Drake's single that came out in 2016, summer 16, for the eye of Providence or the, the eye of Heru, Right? So I just wanted to go into the roses in regards to the aspect of what we saw um, in the teaser for Drake's new album, Certified Lover Boy. So the roses here. This month, this is taken from an article, excuse me. Um, this is taken from an article and it was very, very um, pertinent. This month, when we celebrate Valentine's Day, it is interesting to note that the rose is not only a symbol of love, but a symbol of discretion. Legend has it that Cupid gave a red rose to Harpocrates the god of silence, to bribe him to secrecy over the dillions of Venus. And so the red rose became the symbol of discretion, love, passion, and romance. Roses were thenceforth painted on the ceilings of banquet halls to remind all gathered there that whatever was said there should not be repeated, which became the expression sub rosa under the rose. Another, another legend says that while Aphrodite was running to the dying Adonis, she was scratched by a rose bush and her blood falling on a rose turned them red. Other account says that Adonis turned his blood into red roses. Now, Aphrodite is basically supposed to be what? Drake's baby mom. You feel what I'm saying? In regards to the, um, in regards to the, you know, the symbolism, believe it or not, Aphrodite is supposed to be Drake's baby mother. The one that father, the one that she, that he and, um, the one that, the one that he, um, had the child with that, that woman, I forget the name, excuse me. Uh, I think her name is Sophie or something like that, but she's supposed to be proverbial Aphrodite because she's a whore. You feel what I'm saying? Drake, you know, he, he wifed up a stripper or he got a stripper pregnant. She's a whore. So she's playing out that role of Aphrodite, believe it or not. And I'm going to go more into it. 
Now we know Lil Wayne, or if some of you guys know, Lil Wayne had mentioned Aphrodite on a song, on Benny the Butcher's song, Timeless. So you got to listen to Benny the Butcher's song, Timeless, and you'll hear um, Lil Wayne mention Aphrodite, saying, treat her like a goddess like Aphrodite. So Aphrodite was a Greek goddess of ancient times who was linked with beauty, love, and sexuality. Symbolic items related to Aphrodite are roses. So that's why you see the roses in regards to, um, you know, so far gone, the, the album cover. Doves, sparrows, swans, and shrub called myrtle. These produce a fragrant essential oil. Aphrodite had a cult following, which was mainly based in parts of mainland Greece and Cyprus. The festival which celebrated her was called Aphrodisia. And this is where you get the term aphrodisiac from. It means something that's appealing, something that's that you look at as like that's the paragon. Right. So although Aphrodite was married to Hephaestus, who was the god of metalworking and blacksmiths, she managed to have several affairs. These affairs included Ares, the god of war, Anchises or Anchises, excuse me, a human shepherd and Adonis, also a human shepherd. Now, Adonis is basically an offspring of Pan. You feel what I'm saying? All, all intertwined in regards to the triage of Pan, Aphrodite, and Eros. You feel what I'm saying? The, like the gods and goddesses of sex and lust and so on and so forth. That's just the A's. So let's go on to um, Pan. Pan was the god of shepherds, the wilderness, and rustic music. You know, the goat god. And this is where you, this is, this goes into the Capricornus, and I'm gonna go into that soon. He also was a friend to the female nymphs who were minor god-like creatures. Each had their own responsibility, the beaches, springs, waterfalls, meadows, etc. The male equivalent of a nymph was called a satyr. And you can read about the satyrs, you know, in the scriptures. Satyrs, a satyr is basically short for Saturn, but not not in all cases, but but in, in most cases, it's short for Saturn. A pan was the god of nature, or excuse me, as pan was the god of nature, he was worshipped in caves and grottoes, not temples. His parentage is not established. One myth is that his mother slept with 108 potential suitors. This might be why his name is Pan, which is which in Greek means all. And this is why Janelle Monet, she has said that she came out as a pansexual because it's deeper than just, you know, man and woman. They have sex with all things. That's what they do. That's what they believe in in, in regards to the music industry. They have sex with all things. So just going into Capricornus, and this is the reason why it's being released in January, because January is for the Capricorn or, you know, Zodiac sign Capricorn, Capricornus. Capricornus is one of the constellations of the Zodiac. Its name is Latin for horned goat. So Capricornus is pan. That's what that is, or goat horn, or having horns like a goat's. And it is commonly represented in the form of a sea goat. Sea goat is, is, is basically the fish god, Dagon, a mythical creature that is half goat, half fish. Its symbol is, what you see there, Unicode. So this is Capricorn or Capricornus with the goat and the fish coming together. We're not supposed to be into astrology and astronomy. We're not supposed to be into divination. You, you got people that think that a personality trait is based off of, off of a zodiac sign. That's just nonsense. We've been trained to believe that because that's just natu- that's just naturally intrinsic within us in regards to you know, these personality types, it's not necessarily like the Zodiac. It's just, we just humans. We all have these characteristics. You can't just apply that to some shit that's based in some, some pagan worship system. And we all been, we all, we all been lost. You know, I'm not going to go too like far with it in regards to like beating people over the head and trying to like, you know, knock them for their beliefs or knock them for their ignorance. Cause we all been in that stage where we didn't know, you know what I mean? But when you know better, you do better. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do better. By what? By pointing out the Luciferianism, by, you know, trying to empower brothers so they can understand what's important for them in regards to putting the most high first on and so forth. Right. So this right here is basically an ancient depiction of Pan, Cupid and Aphrodite. You see Pan on the um, far right. Cupid, you know, the little baby, quote unquote, angel, God, Hippocrates. And then you see here Aphrodite, you know, the whore goddess. Hippocrates, ancient Greek, was the god of silence, secrets, and confidentiality in a Hellenistic region or religion developed in Ptolemaic 
Alexandria, and also an embodiment of hope, according to Plutarch. Harpocrates was adapted, was adapted by the Greeks from the ancient Egypt child god Horus, who, who represented the newborn sun rising each day at dawn. Harpocrates' name was a Hellenization of Egyptian Harpocrates, or Harupocrates, meaning Horus, the child. See the equivalent Roman goddess of silence to Sita. So I just wanted to go on something known as Pythagorean numerology. And I covered this before, but it's important for us to cover it again. We see that the number six represents FOX, and that's why you see, you know, Fox and, you know, so on and so forth. Like, like as far as the news station and all that, TV station. The, the letter X represents six. So when you see rappers like Kendrick Lamar, who has a song called 666, or you see movies from like Vin Diesel, where it's like triple X, it's supposed to represent 666. Right. So these are lyrics that are taken from the song I'm Upset from Drake's studio album, Scorpion. And the funny thing about it is I'm Upset is listed as number six on the album track list. And XXX Tentacion, you know, 666 Sensation was sacrificed for that album to come out. So it says here, that's the only time I ever shoot below the neck. SMS triple X, that's the only time I ever shoot below the neck. Why you keep on shooting if you know that nigga dead? That's the only kind of shit that gets you some respect. Got a lot of blood and it's cold. So Drake is letting you know that he's a Luciferian and he's willing to do anything it takes for him to continue to remain in that high status that he's in. So that's why Drake is always at the top because He's an ardent, ardent Luciferian, an ardent Luciferian. He has to do the things that's as, you know, of the understanding of the pagan rites and rituals where, you know, they worship Baal, they worship Pan, they worship Osiris, they worship all the pagan deities. That's what they worship. XXX Tentacion was killed in June of 2018. Now, 18 is what? 666. Six, six. six times three is 18. June 6th, well, June 18, 2018 is when he died. You feel what I'm saying? In Deerfield Beach, Florida, but the singer of Sad, months before he published in his Instagram story that if anyone tried to kill me, it was Champagne Poppy, the name of Drake's account. So XXX Tentacion was killed, and Drake was the one who killed him. And that's just a fact. <laughs> it's, no, it's no cutting corners with that. It's nothing around that. And people just, just threw that shit under the mud because people... When you have these people that come and, and they're basically like whistleblowers, people don't take them seriously. You know, behind the scenes they do, but when it comes to publicization or, um, you know, for public consumption, excuse me, they make it seem as if these people are crazy and it's a joke and, you know, something's wrong with them. But behind the scenes, they know what they're about. You feel what I'm saying? Like when XXX was alive and was talking all that crazy stuff. People would try to make it seem like he was crazy. He's just he bugging out. But behind the scenes, they knew what he was. They knew what he was about. So I don't know if I touched on this, but I just want to touch on it again if I have. Once again, this is the lyrics from Drake's, well, Rick Ross's song, Gold Roses, where Drake says, Rocks will do you filthy for me soon as I give him the nod, meaning he'll blast for me like putting his six with the God. So Drake knows that he's a Luciferian. He knows that he's blasphemous. To further prove that XXX Tentacion was a sacrifice for the release of Drake's album Scorpion, Jay-Z, Jay-Z said on the song Talk Up, Jay-Z has referenced the death of XXX Tentacion during a guest spot on Drake's new album. It's no coincidence that Jay-Z says what he says on this goddamn song. And people will take it like, oh, Jay-Z talking about other people because he said, y'all y'all kill X, let Zimmerman live. No, you idiot. You have to understand what this shit is about, man. That can't be so simple, man. That cannot be simple, man. Jay-Z has referenced the death of XXX Tentacion during the guest spot on Drake's new album. On Scorpion, the rap icon makes an appearance on Talk Up and opens up on the shooting that killed XXX Tentacion just last week. The moment comes as Jay reflects upon the death of Trayvon, Trayvon Martin, the Florida teenager killed by George Zimmerman in 2012, and that was a sacrifice too. Trayvon Martin's father is a Mason. Jay-Z know what he's doing when he say what he say, man. 
He said, y'all kill X, let Zimmerman live. Why did he say that on that specific song with Drake? What does XXX Tentacion have to do with Jay-Z? It's all strategic, man. And it's only revealed unto the people that's of the elect, the hopeful elect, for people to see it in this way. Not, not, not simple stuff like Jay-Z saying what he said. I'm just talking about for you to see it in this way. A simple-minded person that's just a leaf in the wind, they're not going to see it this way. And that's what it's all about. You have to be able to discern based off of things being revealed to us on a sub subconscious level, surreptitious level, on a sly level. You get it? So that's all I wanted to um, bring out for you, brothers. I appreciate you guys for the support in the channel. Um, I just want to say I apologize for like, you know, my lack of strengthening the content. Because, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in my life, but I just want you guys to bear with me and I just appreciate you all for, for um, supporting. So thank you all. Peace.